peace reigns once more over this land and its villages. A green freshness has returned to its mountain forests. No one arriving today would think a ruthless war raged here 30 years ago. Our war hero sacrifice will be engraved on our thoughts and feelings for generations to come. stole the lives of millions, millions more lost limbs. No one knows how many still suffer from wounds inflicted by bullets and bombs. The bodies of others may be intact, yet harbor wounds left by Agent Orange. Who can describe their pain? until the end of 1971, the U.S. military sprayed 15 kinds of chemicals, totaling 72 million liters, on the rural delta and mountains of South Vietnam. After 1965, Agent Orange was the major chemical used. Agent Orange contains dioxin, an extremely toxic and stable chemical. No other known substance is as poisonous or as dangerous as dioxin. Mrs. Chen Lee is the former head of the Women's Union of Kamlo. Two of the airplanes flew overhead and sprayed me. I was soaking wet as if I had been caught out in a heavy rain. I vomited black blood. It was terrifying. My skin rose up in wells as if I had been burned with boiling water, but there weren't burns. The wells stung and itched. It felt like someone was lancing me with needles. In 1967, I went to the south and fought in Tây Nguyên, Dạc Tô, Tâm Khanh, Gia Lai and Con Tum. I was sprayed by Agent Orange three times. Two or three of their airplanes released poisonous chemicals that hung in the air like a yellowish mist all morning. At the time, we didn't know what this was. It turned out their campaign was to destroy our cover by spraying the delta and mountainous areas. The leaves dropped from the trees. Then after the time, the planes dropped bombs. The forest burned. spray destroyed our crops standing in the fields, leaving us with nothing to eat. Our drinking water was poisoned, or we couldn't move to another area. Professor Wang Bing Ko is president of the 1080 committee, which researches the effects of dioxin. When dioxin enters the human body, it damages the genes and the immune system. The adverse effect on genes continues from generation to generation. I married in 1977, after the end of the war. In December 1977, my wife gave birth to Zuyen, who was abnormal from birth. She's so retarded, she has little awareness. Anyone looking at our children will think she's healthy. 
but she is usually sick every five or seven days. Sometimes she'll have convulsions three times or even five times in a day. In March of 1981, my wife gave birth to this, our second child. She was also abnormal at birth. Her body was small, her head large. After demobilization in late 1975, I married and had my first child in 1976. Her skin is very thin. When she was six months old, pimples appeared all over her. After that, the pimples turned into splotches. Now the splotches have grown larger and thicker. They cover her body, even her scalp. I was in the battlefields of Zoling and Kamlo. My wife was a soldier in Tây Nguyen. After peace, we returned home, married, and had three children. Not till one is healthy. My own health is weak. After Red Cross doctors examined us a number of times, they wrote in their records that we had been poisoned by chemicals during the war. This is my younger brother, who was a soldier at the front from 1968. He returned in apparent good health, but three years later became so seriously ill that he didn't know anything. When they took him to the hospital, the doctor said he had been contaminated by poisonous chemicals. The toxin also harmed his three children. Not a one is normal. I was sprayed by poisonous chemicals when I was three months pregnant with my daughter Hien. She's been demanded from birth. It is not terminal dementia. Sometimes she knows things, but then she immediately forgets. And then there are these growths like extra muscle emerging from inside her body. They continue to emerge and continue to emerge. I fought along the banks of the Taekhan River in western Guangxi province, where the Americans sprayed poisonous chemicals, killing all the vegetation. After demobilization, I married and had two children, both like this. Dang Thi Ngo, age 20, and Dang Thi Hui, age 18, are both blind and toothless. They can neither talk nor smile. Mr. Lok was sprayed by chemicals while on the Ho Chi Minh tray. He has since died, leaving his wife to care for four handicapped children and his elderly mother, age 80. All three children of a veteran in Bakhni began to have muscle contractions at age 14 or 15. Mrs. Hien in Taibing province gave birth to five children, all without eyes. According to estimates made in 1995 by the Ministry of Labor, were invalids and social welfare, the number of Agent Orange victims in our country is more than two million. More than half a million of these are children.
The toxic chemicals the American military sprayed didn't distinguish between sides. Both sides were victims. During the war, I was a soldier for the Saigon Army. In 1965, I was stationed in the Chung Sơn Mountains between Cam Lo and Kua 41. I was sprayed by poisonous chemicals. After that, I had two children, both handicapped. After a third of a century, Agent Orange has moved into the third generation to the grandchildren of the first victims. Who knows how long these after effects will continue? Will it be 50 years or 100 or even longer? During the 20th century, two cruel events of war were the atomic war in Japan and the chemical war in Vietnam. Dioxin didn't only harm Vietnamese, it also injured American soldiers. American veterans suffer from its destructive after effects. We have a clear example in the family of Admiral Zumwalt, who ordered the spraying of Asian Orange during the war. His son, a lieutenant in the Navy, was sprayed. Ten years later, he died from cancer, and his son is mentally and psychologically handicapped. Admiral Zumwalt wrote this book, My Father, My Son, describing the illnesses of the two successive generations, his sons and his grandsons. He gives us a poignant image of the destructive effect of diocene. Individual American veterans sued the manufacturers of Agent Orange and settled out of court for damages. American Veterans Associations are suing the United States government over Agent Orange. The Australian government and the Korean parliament have passed laws providing compensation for their veterans who were victims of dioxin during the Vietnam War. <coughs> I was sprayed with toxic chemicals in Tây Ninh, but haven't yet had any assistance. My family has difficulty now because my wife died, leaving me with four children, but I have yet to receive any assistance. When the war ended, the soldiers returned home, married and had children never thinking the war's aftermath would bring them such painful wounds. The families of those who died or lost a limb during the war have received financial assistance, but soldiers like these men, sprayed by chemicals, have yet to receive any help. Mr. Phan Minh Tam is chair of the Committee for the Care and Protection of Children in Taibing Province. In Taibing, we have 1,483 handicapped children of soldiers who were sprayed by poisonous chemicals during the war. Most of these children face great difficulties because they don't fit the requirements for children to have fallen or wounded soldiers. That's the reason we've concentrated on these children. Our committee has assisted 516 children with regular and intermittent handouts. It's a small step to solving their difficulties.
In past years, the Committee for the Care and Protection of Children has worked from national to local levels to assist tens of thousands of children who are victims of Agent Orange. Local authorities, charitable organizations and local residents have helped with rice, money and medicine. Assistance and compassion for near and far have been lifesavers for families suffering from the effects of dioxin. The Vietnam Fund for the Protection of Children has drafted a rehabilitation plan for handicapped children in Quang Chi, the province of former South Vietnam bordering the demilitarized zone. A number of children there have been harmed by Agent Orange. This first step has drawn upon the financial assistance of millions of individuals and several hundred national and international organizations, especially the Australian Christian Fund for Children. Veterans' wives who are mothers of handicapped children have borne hardships for years. I've been pregnant ten times. Each time, the fetus atrophies during the fifth or sixth month, and each time, in the ninth month, doctors at the provincial hospital told me the fetus had died. The doctors said this was an after effect of the war. And to this day, I haven't been able to give birth to a normal child. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Dung's husband, veteran Levan Lup, was sprayed by toxic chemicals during the war. Now he is blind. Even though he spins jut from morning to night, he makes less than seven cents a day. If the local leaders, neighbors, and the editors of labor newspaper hadn't given help in time, they would have committed suicide. Neighbors try to help the families beset by difficulties, but they can't do anything. They can only help now and then, or at time of greatest need, but they can't tend to their ordinary daily needs. These brothers and sisters gave their health for our country's revolution, but now they live in a state beyond poverty and have to bear these additional losses. The worst thing of all is that their children are damaged. <laughs> A child in such desperate need, yet she is lucky to have a father and a mother. But after we are gone, who will take care of her? No mother can ever forget the needs of such a child. The mother will eventually die, but she can never close her eyes. The war has slipped away into the past. However, its ongoing horrors and their painful repercussions continue to haunt. <laughs>